everybody. Welcome to a very special episode of Talking Heartland. We have a special interview for you. We have Caleb himself, Carrie James is here, and I'm film critic Rachel Wagner. Michelle is here. Hey, everyone. And Carrie, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, we're so excited. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. So what we like to start with the actors we interview is, is what inspired you to get into acting? Oh, yeah. what else was I going to do? Someone like me, like I'm clearly just transient by nature, a little of mm -hmm. everything, probably just a pretender. That's what acting is. So it's like, I just sort of, it was this or a being an actual just transient wanderer. So, you know, and it was the most obvious connection for me just to be an actor. Yeah. How old were you when you first started with uh, Heartland? It was, it was one of your first uh, roles, right? I think it was 19. They just turned 20. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. It was funny. And it, yeah, it was pretty much like my third role. The other roles were just like, hey, dude, on camera, just <laughs> yeah. like kind of one-liners. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how did you get the role of Caleb? Was it like a hard audition process? Uh, not so much. I had auditioned and they were looking at another kid. And I guess he, he just wasn't really um, able to ride horses. And then there was a scheduling conflict with another actor. So I was actually just their third choice. And um, I actually, I think that the reason that I've been so successful as Caleb being included in the show all these years has largely to do with um, um, the actual friendships that exist, like between Graham and I just heighten each other's energy all the time. And then just friendships with Amber. So yeah, it was a very lucky situation. A bunch of people couldn't do it and I could. <laughs> Yeah. Did, yeah. So did they bring you on knowing that you were they thinking you would be a guest role or were they thinking this can be a more uh, permanent um, commitment? Well, as far as the original, the original, I, as far as I know, and this is a million years ago, but uh, to me, it's a million years ago. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, um, I think it was supposed to be like a six episode arc or kind of go through the season and see where he fits in is kind of how it was told to me. And I honestly, I, I've been on a lot of other film sets since, but there was something special about Heartland, about B. Graham and Amber and, and our just friendship. So that friendship in real life, the energy from that just sort of carried over with all of our performances. Mm -hmm. And that was so authentic and natural because I was such a green actor. I, I owe so much of what I learned about acting to my time and experience over the last like, 10, 15 years on set because of Heartland. So I've learned something about what acting is now. But when I started, I, I was so green that if I hadn't had the guidance of like Sean Johnson and Chris Potter and some of our directors, coupled with that natural energy the three of us had together, none of it would have worked and they would have gotten rid of me right away. So it was a very, very lucky situation. If you were brought in originally as like a, a love interest, a rival for, uh, with Ty for yeah. Amy. Yeah, originally. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and just off of that, Kerry, were you surprised that they sort of went the route of making Caleb and Ty best friends? Nah. Nah. It was it was gonna like, I don't know. If if no, because the writers, they watch, they're clever. Our showrunners, our producers, they're clever. And they they look for ways to make things have longevity. And so they saw our friendship right away. And how, how we just got along like brothers and we were, we were total idiots, playful together. So they were like, well, this really has to go this direction. And I think they made a really, really wise choice. And um, even just Caleb being around now, I still think that has a lot to do with, um, with how well Caleb became because of Ashley and Caleb. I owe so much of my career just to Cindy, Cindy Busby's energy and how long, how, how well we became friends because she she was a much more experienced actor at that point and so she she really did pull the best out of me and then as years went by i i i sort of was able to catch up to where she was coming from and some where some of the others were coming from and that's when the fun really began and uh i i owe so much of caleb still being on the show i believe to to cindy I was going to ask you about that with cindy so that was your first time playing a married person right yeah. Yeah. So was that challenging? No, Cindy, was the that? Best. Yeah, Cindy was the best. And we had such a playful, trusting, earnest relationship. 
as friends and um and as as like as peers on the show that all we ever did was bring out laughs in one another i'm pretty sure like 99.9 percent of the time we just were having fun and that included like the camera team and the director and writer and scripty all of us that was just it was just a lot of fun being on set for the caleb and ashley days yeah, yeah they ended so abruptly it was kind of sad yeah we yeah <laughs> You're yeah. like yep yeah, pretty much <laughs> well i mean you know cindy, yeah. cindy uh Cindy had a dream, and I think, man, yeah. look at the way she's integrated with Hallmark. That girl did. Oh, yeah. She the sh. She's the sh. Yeah. <laughs> we get it. <laughs> yeah, we. She is great. She's been very supportive of our podcast. She was one of the first uh, celebrity, I guess, interviews that we ever did uh, in the like top five that we we did, and she's just been great over the years. Yeah, she's rad. She's super mm -hmm. super cool person. So did you? So you knew how to horseback ride and do all that stuff. Well, uh, no. before you, you no. have to roll get out of town of course not i'm an actor <laughs> no. i was an actor I'm not a cowboy i learned uh -huh. to be a no i fell in love with being a cowboy yeah. um i wish i got to do a lot more riding and a lot more cowboying i i don't get to do as much as as i used to especially in those early seasons but once again it was a very special recipe and situation um i was simply included and invited on a lot of weekend activities that featured being around horses so I, I sort of just fell in love with them through happenstance. And, um, and because I had so much fun doing it, I ended up being all right at it. Mm -hmm. Now, from like a viewer standpoint, who doesn't know a lot about horseback riding specifically, maybe they would think I'd do great. Yeah. But from a cowboy point of view, I like, for a novice rider, I can hold my own pretty well. Mm -hmm. And even if I'm not, I make a face that says I am. <laughs> Because Kevin McGarry told us that he lied and said that he knew how to ride horses to oh, get the part, and then he did oh, it. Everybody <laughs> lies. Um, actors, like I said, professional pretenders. So they're just like, if they were like right now, okay, we we want you as the lead for this movie, hundred million dollar budget, but we need you to be able to fly a fighter jet. I'd be like, <laughs> no problem, bro. I flew one like a week ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Straight yeah. up. They could tell you make it right. Yeah, yeah, right. And then what's the worst that happened? You get fired. Yeah, that's no right. <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite Caleb hairstyle over the seasons? Uh, yeah, you know, you know. Go on, you know. You know what I prefer. <laughs> I like the locks, girl. I like my, it's my little, you know, West Coast hippie wink. And plus, you know, all the 70s cowboys movies, like the cool guy always had long hair. So, you know. Maybe not in modern culture is it is it so cool, but I like to think that it's coming out more and maybe it had something to do with Caleb. And I think I imagine, Carrie, I imagine you had to work a lot with the stunt team. I'm just wondering how um, that went. I got to witness the stunt team a lot. Um, <laughs> they're, they're incredible athletes. I always say that, you know, Caleb is actually an amalgamation of the work of a lot of different people. The writers are part of Caleb. The director is part of Caleb and the stunt guys, they are absolutely part of being Caleb. Collectively together, Caleb exists because of because of their work too. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say some of Caleb's most interesting and most dynamic and biggest moments have been some falls that the stunt guys have done professionally so that no one got hurt in some incredible yeah. situations. And that was yeah. definitely not me. I don't take any falls. I'm an actor, son. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you have a favorite horse? to work with uh i used to but then the seasons went by and the truth about how 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 horses get changed in and out come and go so i'm not anymore what was no, your original I, favorite i just jag jag of course mm. he was the first horse they put me on that little quarter horse in the first mm -hmm. seasons i loved him i miss him yeah We'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode and that is the hallmarkies patreon do you love Hallmarkies podcast? Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? Do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks? Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies podcast. By becoming a patron, you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch-alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. 
It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. What is the best part about shooting Harlan, your favorite thing? I think the thing that I'm pointing at the most and have been talking about is just the community, the family. Mm -hmm. And also as like, you know, an in general poor person, the money's kind of nice when they bring me in. Sure, yeah. Uh, Do you, did you have any sense when you first started that this was going to be something that would last, that it was going to, or? (laughs) Didn't care. Didn't care. I was Mm -hmm. so young and so full of joy. And having such a good time, I didn't care. Every day was the only and last day. So it didn't matter. Uh-huh. Just, I just wanted to ride the wave. And I think from the standpoint I take now, I'm, I'm glad that I've had that. I think that when you're an actor and the type of person I am, the way to be successful at that is to truly just let that energy thrive on set where it belongs. And yeah, I, mm-hmm. I enjoy all of it. It's pure joy to me. Yeah. And I think that, you know, accidentally helped lend itself to longevity yeah well we're always impressed that i think the show does a good job of being about cowboys but not being like a macho cowboy show and that they you still have the uh the the guys are still willing to you know take care of katie or you know or or just help uh i I feel like they could be a lot more like macho and i I, i'm glad that they do what they do i think so too i think that um i think that our writers and our producers and obviously our star miss amber marshall are like no one is more salt of the earth true soul than amber like she she is Amber is way cooler than Amy Fleming, even like straight up. Amber's cooler. And Amber thrives in a culture that has been traditionally dominated by masculine energy. Right. But she's figured out how to bring not only her own energy to that level, but still be be a powerful like female and female leader and become a mother and all these other incredible things she's done. And I think that the show absolutely notices that and appreciates that. And so, yeah, we've been broadening the scope of what it means to be a cowboy. And I yeah. think that at least the feedback that I get from Instagram anyways, because we've, we become a lot more dynamic with things and a lot more inclusive and show a lot more love and space for community in the world and different culture. And we invite it in. And I think that the feedback that I get online is a lot of appreciation. A lot of people being like, wow, man, I really can just be myself and still be this, this cowboy. And so, yeah, you can. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like that Caleb is very sort of, his relationships are very important to him. Um, and that again goes against the sort of rodeo cowboy sort of stereotype. You know, he's, he's, he's very committed. Um, See, that's the, thing the, about, the thing about stereotypes is they are bang mm-hmm. on true or they actually represent the other side of the line where it's, it's mm-hmm. an in reflection. <laughs> All rodeo cowboys are wounded heart, soft, open creatures. They're there to bond with each other and build packs. That's community mm-hmm. happening. Just because they, you know, laugh at each other. At the end of the day, they all laugh and cry together. Mm-hmm. So the very, the very similar idea of what they represent is fractured just from the beginning. It's mm-hmm. like, no, they're just rough around the edges, but they're big sissies, just like everybody else. <laughs> When humans yeah. be humans, yo. <laughs> and I think, in the modern, I think in the modern age, like nobody escapes that. I even see old boys that never shed a tear in their lives suddenly being part of this, this modern epoch, watching TikTok just like the rest of us, seeing the same memes, being affected the same way. Everyone's bringing their hearts to the surface. And that definitely includes rodeo cowboy culture. Yeah. Well, they're all yeah. dancing like fancy like. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I wouldn't necessarily like, you know, and that's the thing is like, that's, that's the danger is like their macho image is intact. It just mm-hmm. includes a lot more room for feelings and experiencing self. Yeah. At least up here in Canada, at least that's my experience of it. Did you notice a big uptick in people like recognize you and knowing the show when it went to Netflix? Uh, kind of. I mean, I, I live on a little island. Not so much. No, mm-hmm. people don't usually recognize me because, you know usually in my pajamas or something like this. 
They're like, you look like that guy on Heartland. Like, yeah, kind of. That's right. He looks like you. <laughs> you got to respect, like, the thing. Like, I don't know. Like, I can't speak for the States. I know y'all go, like, way crazier for fandom down there. It's pretty uh -huh. intense. Yeah. But up here, um, like, because of the nature of the show, like, this isn't, um, people don't obsess over my character of Caleb so much as being like, oh, Carrie James, they don't care about me. They just, the, the, the demographic is families and that. So the people that stop me are like, it's some mom and dad with their kids. So I, I just yeah. pretend to be Caleb for the kids. Mom and dad are super happy. Get a quick selfie. They're like, oh, that was so lovely. You're such a nice guy. It's perfect. As yeah, opposed to a movie star or something where someone would actually want a piece of you. Like even like Amber, I think people might want more from her than they'd ever want from the guy who plays Caleb, which works right. for me. Yeah. 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 So we just finished season nine. And that was a big moment for Caleb and Cass and Cassandra. Um, and uh, so, yeah, what's that like working with C Caitlin Lieb? Caitlin Lieb's amazing. We got lucky again. They kept us around, they paired us together. And we were like instant friendship. Yeah, we've had fun ever since. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a big moment for Caleb's character, uh, you know, all this, being a father. And that's going to be exciting. I think I think Caleb will take to it very naturally. Yeah. yeah got those father so vibes. He's got the paternal energy in him. It's there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Uh, also memorable in season nine was the whole scene with you wearing the Daisy Dukes with Jade. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> that was funny. I, that script, I was kind of like, you know, I, I when I read the script, I was like, wow, I should have read this when they first sent it to me and not like, you know, <laughs> got here. Um, now I get why people have been snickering all week. <laughs> and uh yeah i just uh what are you gonna do you just it's not a choice i'd necessarily um make in my own life but uh <laughs> she's in the script man you gotta own it like it is you just gotta own it did you have the just the giggles <laughs> when you saw uh yeah with, yeah yeah it was not a with you and madison Chris, Chris Potter was losing his mind. He was laughing so hard at me, like, like, ha 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 ha. And I'm just like, ah, uh. yeah, yeah. Hey. We felt we felt like it was a pretty good season, season nine for Tim, because Tim isn't always our favorite. He, yeah, no, he... Tim reached new new ways of thinking. Um, but yeah. honestly, that moment, owning the Daisy Dukes like that and rocking it and doing it on behalf of Jade, um, even that, the feedback on Instagram um, from, from, from the different communities out there was nothing but positive. They all actually really appreciated it. And they appreciated um, the fact that it was included on a show like Heartland, which yeah. um, culture that is traditionally not so open to that kind of play, at least visibly. Yeah, it was really good. It was very funny. We were bold. Um, <laughs> what is the hardest part about shooting Heartland? Um, leaving. Yeah. Yeah. The whole thing, like I, you know, being part of the real world, I and um, doing real jobs in between Heartland and that. Uh, for me, it, it is my vacation from the real world. I literally call it that. It is so much fun for me, and I totally appreciate how the other actors who spend a lot more time on set um could get very tired i never have to reach that burnout line whereas like you know amber sean johnson and that they have long endless days like michelle those are long hard days and she's in the later years she's taken on a lot more so they are long challenging exhausting days but when you only have to do it for like a week at a time it's like woo. Yeah. Yeah, it must be fun just sort of popping in and out hell yeah, yeah. it is <laughs> I think it, it gives me a special place on the show because yeah. it it every time I show up there, I'm at a hundred percent intensity and joy where mm -hmm. and refresh. And the others often are like, oh my God, can I please piggyback on some of this? And I'm like, yeah, I got enough for everyone. <laughs> yeah. I I'm always amazed with what they are able to do with the horses on the show and how they're able to uh obviously they're able to get them for whatever is sort of the the problem of the week um but without actually hurting them without actually having them and i just think that's incredible is that just an amazing thing to watch these horse handlers it's next level it's like 
the real version of the horse whisper. Yeah, it's something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's almost it's almost supernatural to witness the type of communication and subtlety that takes place. Yeah, I'm always amazed. To be yeah. honest, the whole team, everyone on the other side of the camera, were like, "Wow!" Like, yeah, every time. Yeah, we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. Do you have like favorite Kayla moments? Uh, Well, you said working with Ashley. Yeah, um, everything at the trailer with Cindy was incredible. We had so much fun. And aside from that, of course, all my like ram bam crash fun moments with Graham. We had we had an amazing time. But as far as like the memories that I missed the most was the working at the trailer and all the goofy stuff, like the roof falling down. Everything went wrong is was was fun to us. Yeah. That yeah. trailer has been through a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It really, I think the it, whole cast has sort of stayed there at one point. We're sort of keeping track of the amount of people that move in. Pretty yeah. funny. It's definitely, it's just the heart hostel. Yeah. <laughs> when the raccoons. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Good times. Yeah. And every time we went, weather was just horrible and cold, and somehow we still made it fun. Very good. All right. Well, uh, we have some fun questions to end we like to end our interviews off some fun silly questions not that the previous questions have not been silly as well but let's do it go for it the first question is what is the best ice cream flavor um the best ice cream flavor you wouldn't think this would be the thing that causes me a crisis and not be able to answer <laughs> man this is so embarrassing like these are the kind of things you're supposed to have prepared right so it can be quick Tiger ice cream from my youth. I haven't had it in a lot of years, but dang, that, that stuff was good. What is tiger ice cream? Yeah. Is that a Canada you, thing? I'm so embarrassed for both of you. <laughs> Not even gonna <laughs> Google it. Tiger ice cream. Wow. Okay. Interview over. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's your favorite color? Oh, no. Another one. Um. <laughs> Okay, red, but not the kind of red you're thinking. It's a sensation of red. So like picture like a bodiness, bodiless kind of cool, effervescent, like obsidian smoke with this like red vapor sort of feeding through it. I don't know. It's it's a beautiful crimsonous kind of red. Yeah, that one. Okay. You paint a picture well. (laughs) Okay. What music are you listening to right now? Whatever's on the radio, 102.7 The Peak. Woo, oh. woo. <laughs> no, but really. And then I also found a cassette player at work from the 1970s. And I have like, I have the Shirley's cassette tape. So I've been rocking to the Shirley's. Ah, very good. Okay. What is your go-to date night food? Oh, man. Um, oh, what's a date? What's food? Uh, <laughs> like... We, uh, we've been okay. saying lately, what is your DoorDash order? But I don't know what they have it uh, in Canada. They have DoorDash. It's not a third world country. We have DoorDash. <laughs> uh, but honestly, um, just a steak, but it's like cooked outside on a log where you, where you do the chainsaw and then you burn it and you get the skillet super hot and then you do two minutes on one side and then you flip it for, for a minute and a half on the other and then you leave it alone for 11 minutes. That is the ultimate steak meal. And then she gets fire, stars, forest. Sounds good. Yum. Yeah, that or 7-Eleven, whatever's just from 7-Eleven. <laughs> okay, good. Do they Slurpee or steak? One or the other. Yeah, yeah, or together. <laughs> I think that would be a good date. Okay, well, so what is your go-to date night activity? 
out doing something fun. Does anyone ever answer anything other than Netflix or Prime? <laughs> Prime? Uh. We do get we get some of that. <laughs> a lot of people say, you know, dinner and a movie, but we always say on this podcast, you should do movie and then dinner because then you have something to talk about at dinner. I think that I'd be down just to crush like a whole first season of the show. Nice. Just yeah. Eat crush season. <laughs> Watch a season of Heartland. Yeah, you could. You could. Yeah. Yeah. You could. It's on Netflix. So, okay. Which you like better, dogs or cats? Oh, man. This is not fair. You got to stop. <laughs> um, dogs <laughs> or cats? Oh, man. They're so unique and, and they're both so interesting for their own reasons. But dog, because I have one and I love her. So, yeah. Oh. Her. Kerry, I'll have to say your sort of updates on your pup. Uh, it, when I was waiting on getting my pup, you got yours, I think maybe a, what, a month or so before I was sort of tracking it. And oh. when I got mine, we came over from Romania. And so oh, they've wow. sort of weirdly been grown up together because they're around about the same oh, age. Cool. And it's been so fun watching her grown up. Oh, well, thank you. And yes, it's been fun. And I'm glad you have a puppy too. How amazing is it? Oh handful that's so fun <laughs> the best handful ever oh, yes. the best. <laughs> what kind of dog do you have uh she's my um up to eight different dogs in her but the ones that seem to be the most visible are rhodesian ridgeback and whippet oh wow i never kind heard of, of those yeah but it's just cool. um yeah it's it's interesting kind yeah. of a sh- thing <laughs> cool okay which do you like better beaches or mountains well, I'm from DC, so like we have combos. We have mountains that become beaches. So it's kind of like, can I say somewhere in the middle? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Would you rather be in a suit and tie or sweats? <laughs> I think that's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> I don't even. I own a suit jacket, but I do not even have a tie. I yeah. have countless sweatpants. Very good. Okay, what is your favorite holiday to celebrate? The solstice. <laughs> It's true. That's like the holiday I like the most because, you know, it's a holiday to me and not maybe the most to the world necessarily, but I just like it. Something, I don't know. No one commercial pulls this. Right. We wish they would do another Heartland Christmas movie. That was fun. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You should tell them we're interested. Yeah, we'll tell them. Caleb (laughs) spin off. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Last question. What is your favorite Hallmark or romantic movie? My favorite Hallmark or romantic movie. Does Ghost count as a romantic mm-hmm. movie? Sure. Go. Oh, yeah. Ghost is your favorite. Love that. Very good. Or maybe, well, Big, or maybe Big Fish. That was, that was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. That's a, one of the better Tim Burton movies in the really? last 20 years. <laughs> well said <laughs> burn on burn. well very good you answered all the questions congratulations okay. now <laughs> well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go get my dog great well thanks for taking the time to talk with us we really appreciate it yeah, and, and do you want to share your social media or anything like that um the only one that i really use or i'm ever active on is 689 carrie james 689 at insta- instagram.com that's the one right. but if it is not that it's not me because there's a lot of scammers right now yeah if anyone hasn't noticed don't give anyone i'll never ask you for your money i'll never be like dude don't 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 trust scammers 689 carrie james 689 it's the only one right. well, we will have that in the description people can follow you and thanks again for talking with us this is so much fun oh thanks for having me this this was fun <laughs> i hope your dog gets better <laughs> i not she's actually hurt i just panicked Uh (laughs) that's good that's good all right well hopefully we'll talk again maybe when we get up to the current season we're we're making pretty good progress uh so have a lot to look forward to i don't want to ruin anything for you but you have lots of cool and fascinating things to see yet we're excited we're excited all right well take care of yourself thanks so much and we'll talk to you all later bye everyone bye everyone We'd like to thank Carrie for coming on and talking with us. This was so much fun. And Michelle, where can people find you? Um, on Twitter at Michelle R. Benson. Great. And you can find me at 
Rachel's reviews, all of her social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Ron Tomatoes. And make sure you're following the podcast, the Homeworkies Pod and Homeworkies Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave us your ratings and reviews. We appreciate it so much. And if you are listening or watching on YouTube, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have the Patreon group and merch store where we have Heartland inspired merch. So check that out. And uh, thanks again to Carrie. And we'll uh, talk to you all later. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.